In southern Indiana are investigating a murder in New Albany. Indiana State Police Sergeant Carrie Halls told us the investigation started around 730 last night when police responded to a call of a woman in distress in the parking lot of the Walmart. They determined a welfare check was needed at a home on East 11th Street in New Albany. Sergeant Halls said inside the home, New Albany officers found a 68 year old man dead on the floor with signs of head trauma. The woman from the original distress call who had been taken to the hospital was then arrested and taken to the Floyd County Jail. She's been charged with murder. As of this morning, police have not said how the woman is related to the victim. Once we learn more, we'll get those details for you on WHAS11.com. Yeah, I expect the consent decree to be fully negotiated by the end of this year. Much anticipated update from Mayor Craig Greenberg nearly a year and a half since the Department of Justice released its report on misconduct inside the LMPD. Months since the city began negotiating a consent decree, a conclusion is in sight. WHS 11's Jim Stratman joins us in the studio with more on this. Jim, we're getting some insight here, uh, or we will be at least, when those consent decree negotiations are finished into changes at LMPD. Yeah, we're going to get the complete list once all of these negotiations have finally ended, but that could still be a little bit. We know that we'll get uh, what what has been negotiated as well as kind of how the federal oversight program will work here in Louisville. Again, we don't know exactly what the reforms will be since all of the consent decree negotiations have been in a cl behind closed doors process. What we do know, though, is that negotiations started all the way back in February. That was about 11 months after the DOJ released its report. Now, yesterday, Mayor Craig Greenberg said that there's been progress here in the last few weeks. The big focus has been getting this document right. We do want to get this done so that we can have the roadmap for the future as well. The mayor also admitted that he wants this consent decree resolved as quickly as possible when it is finally negotiated. The city has allotted nearly $400,000 in the 2024-25 fiscal budget for consent decree monitoring. So the longer that this consent decree is in place, the more money it's going to cost you, the taxpayers here in Jefferson County. We don't want to be under a consent decree for a decade as some other cities have. That could be millions and millions of dollars if this goes on for a decade or more. We, we don't have those resources. And that right there gives a little insight into why these negotiations have been going on for the last five months and really highlights the need for the city to get this right. Now, the mayor also talked about how the recent sexual harassment allegations have impacted talks with the DOJ. I'm going to dive more into that coming up here in the next half hour. Eric. All right, Jim, thank you. The DOJ's report found Metro Police used excessive force, conducted searches based on invalid warrants, and unlawfully executed no-knock warrants. Those were banned in Louisville in 2020 after the death of Breonna Taylor. The report also found LMPD unlawfully discriminated against black people and violated the rights of people engaged in protected speech critical of policing. For a closer look at how people in the city are reacting to the consent decree, visit whas11.com. Look for this story on the homepage. A Vine Grove woman accused of killing another woman in Louisville is behind bars this morning on a $250,000 bond. 32-year-old Stephanie Hill appeared in court for the first time yesterday on murder charges. Police say she fatally shot a woman on Glimmer Way near Fairdale early Monday morning. In her arrest documents, detectives say Hill admitted to being the only person with the victim at the time of the shooting and was in position, possession of the victim's cell phone when she was arrested. Hill has pleaded not guilty to the charges and is due back in court a week from today. People in West Louisville are still picking up storm damage nearly a week after two tornadoes touched down in Kentuckiana. According to the National Weather Service, one of those was an EF1 in the Parkland neighborhood. Take a look. One family's backyard walkway is still covered by debris. This is the Petty family. They told us they were worried yesterday's severe weather would lead to a repeat of the July 4th tornado. All this is down already. We're not even done cleaning it up from last week. That's the last thing we need is another tornado. We still don't have Wi-Fi or cable. And when you got kids, that's hard. And then on Woodland Avenue, last week's storm uprooted a more than 100-year-old tree. The NWS also confirmed an EF0 tornado touchdown in Harrison County, Indiana on the 4th. No injuries have been reported from either tornado. And something we know to be true is when something like that happens, people are quick to step in to start helping. Dare to Care is no exception. They're helping people in West Louisville impacted by last week's storms. That organization had a pop-up food pantry yesterday for families in need. 
And those lines were long. The CEO of Dare to Care, his name is Vincent Jaynes. He says the organization has recently seen this increase in demand for services. We're seeing this with inflation, the pandemic benefits decreasing. Now we have that greater need, and that's why it's more now than it was during, the, during 2020 and 2021. We've done a number of stories with Vincent and Dare to Care about that very topic. We'll also tell you immediately after the storms last week, that organization gave out food to people who lost power. Now, if you have debris from last week's storms, Metro government is offering free drop off. You can take tree debris to solid waste management services on Meriwether Avenue, which is just outside of Germantown and Schnitzelburg. You can do that from 2 until 6 p.m. It's set to stay open through Saturday. On Monday, Public Works will pick up tree debris on the streets most impacted by the tornado. Happening today, the Louisville Forum is going to be discussing Amendment 2, which is on the November ballot for Kentucky voters. A yes vote would allow or would open the door to allow taxpayer dollars to go to private or charter schools. A no vote would keep that money exclusively in the public school system, which is how the Kentucky State Constitution is written right now. Leaders with the Jefferson County Teachers Association and the Bluegrass Institute for Public Policy are going to be the two sides of that forum, which starts at noon.